Hi guys. Um, good evening, all of you. Hope all of you can hear me, guys. Uh, anyone? Can you please confirm? Is it audible, guys? Yes, sir. You are audible. Right. Thank you, guys. So, guys. Um, so we have taken a a two introduction classes, guys. That is a two uh, a demo sessions, I can say. So just an introduction, guys. Like, um, what is data science? Uh, in data science, what is the a main important concept? So if anyone has missed the yesterday's in the last couple of classes, guys, don't worry. So today I'm going to share you uh, the last two recorded videos also. So we can just go through them. Uh, just a hardly, guys, 40, 45 minutes of time, two sessions happened. It is only just an introduction part, guys. So don't worry. In the case, if you missed the yesterday's classes, yesterday or day two, last two classes, if you missed. So don't worry. We are still in the introduction part only, guys. So almost all. Uh, for the next, um, all basics only, guys. We are still in the basic level only. So no need to worry about the last two classes. Once again, uh, in the last two classes, what we discussed is, guys, just an introduction part of what is data science. So what we are going to do what with the help of the data science, guys. So in data science, what we are going to do, guys, some kind of a mathematical techniques we are going to implement. Some kind of a mathematical techniques we are going to implement, some kind of a techniques, methodologies, and some kind of an algorithm, systems, etc. we are going to use. Finally, our target is to get some insights from the data, guys. Insights is nothing but understanding the data, guys. So once if you understand the data, using that insights, what we can do, we can do some kind of an prediction or we can take some kind of an, which is going to be some kind of a decisions can be gets taken, guys some kind of a prediction or which is going to be some kind of a decision what we can take it. So simple to understand, how can you take a decision whether to give a loan to a customer or not? How do you do that? By understanding the past customer's behavior, guys. If you understand the past customer's data, you will come to know that what are the people, who are the people are becoming defaulters, who are the customers who are not becoming defaulters. We can get some kind of an which is going to be a story from that particular data. So once you understand the story behind the data, based on that, we can take some kind of a business decisions or we can do some kind of an predictions also can be gets done. So how do you do that? So in data science, we are having a technique called as what we call it as a machine learning technique is going to be there, guys. So this is the main important point, guys. One of the main important concepts which we have to learn in the data science is machine learning. After machine learning, we'll get all the deep learning. After deep learning, we'll get generative AI, NLP. All these are going to be after that only, guys. So, but main important is going to be machine learning. So who is going to, how to get the insights from the data, guys? So for that, I have just explained the concept. What we are going to do, guys, we have the data. The data, we are going to give it to a machine. We are going to take the help of the machine, guys. And the machine is going to get the insights from the data, guys. And based on that particular insights, as I said there, we can take some kind of a business decisions or what we can do something called as an a prediction can be gets done, guys. So that is what we discussed in the last couple of classes, guys. And apart from that, how is our course curriculum? Uh, like what are the different uh, concepts we are going to learn? So Python, core Python concepts. And apart from that, Python videos, so I just explain you about the course curriculum also, and I shared some uh, details about the course details also, the course content also. I have shared you with, I have shared with you guys. If you have any questions, I will take up the questions for today, guys. And after that, what are the things we discussed about, guys? So apart from that, some kind of a technical. Uh, what are the skills we are going to learn, guys? Just quickly, if you say that we are going to learn some skills like how to do the data collection from various systems how to do the data analytics we have to do. And apart from that, how to perform the data cleansing, cleaning of data guys, data cleansing or data cleaning, what we have to do. And apart from that, one more skill set called as what is going to be data visualization. So all these are going to be the, what are the skills we are going to learn in guys. And after that, we are going to also discuss about the model fitting. Model fitting is a whatever the step where the machine is going to learn guys. That is a step where the machine is going to learn, guys. So that is the only step which machine is going to do. Remaining all the steps, we have to do it manually, guys. After the model has learned something from the data, how much effectively it has learned, that is what we call it as evaluation. And after that, we are going to be calling it as a tuning. 
tuning of the model performance and finally we are going to perform something called as an a deployment guys so deployment into a local system or deployment into a cloud is what we are going to learn in guys so these are the some of the skill sets guys whether you do a machine learning deep learning nlp okay a time series analysis whatever we do it guys so data collection of data data analysis and data cleansing and data visualizations guys and some kind of a pre processings we are going to do model fitting this is the only step which machine is going to do guys this is automatically done by the machine that is what we call it as model fitting or model training and after that evaluation of model performance tuning that is improving of model performance and deployment of the model guys so as i said that what is model fitting if you just go and search in the internet what is meaning of model fitting so model fitting is the whatever the phase where the model the machine is going to learn from that particular data guys so that is what the technically i just discussed in the the last session guys i didn't started with any practical but this is going to be just some of the technical terminologies which we have to learn and which we have to expertise whenever you want to go for a, a data science implementation guys right so that's it these are the just a basic introductions only we have done in the last class guys we have not started with any practical things i didn't done any practical implementation also guys just today here and there i'll show you some basic basics uh, small small the skill sets what i am going to show you guys okay anyone guys any questions so any questions regarding the last two couple of classes what i discussed so if you have any questions i can just take up the questions and then i can go forward guys <clears throat> no questions guys anyone sir i have a doubt sir yes yeah yeah go ahead sir uh, suppose i have collected the data mm -hmm. let's suppose for, for a real time problem i have collected mm -hmm. the data just okay. to, firstly we will do data analysis or uh, data visualization sir data I, I analysis have... we have to do that first we have to do the data analysis to yes, to, to see first initially what we will do is first the basic mm -hmm. Uh, we are having some kind of a basic statistical analysis will be there first initially okay. okay so because if you do the visualization what will happen here is see i just i'll tell you one uh, a small example just to easy to easy to uh, make you understand the concept i have some data is there for example i'm just taking a small example only let us say the temperature and date time so i just taken some uh, the i'm just taking some measurement of temperature maybe some atmospheric measurement and then we are going to across at some particular time it is going to be let us say 12 am what is the temperature at 1 am what is the temperature 2 am what is the temperature we have the data for example at 3 am there is no data was there the data was missing for example at 4 am if i take the data which is going to be somewhere around 4 it is going to be uh, we are going to be having a data like for example 19 degrees something we have it 20 now, if I plot the data, what is going to happen now? The data from 20 degrees, it will came to 19, came to 18. So the light, the, it will be like this. After that, what happened now? Being at 3 o'clock, we don't have a temperature. So the data was missing. Again, at 4 o'clock, it will start from 19. So that means your graph or your plot is going to be something which is going to be looks like this. So is there a breakdown of the data is there? No, right? If you directly do the data visualization, that's why before going to that i will check out whether there is any empty values are there so that is what analyze analysis means don't think that we are trying to understand the data we are just understanding how the data was there what is the data i'm not bothered about that how the data was there is there any missing values are there is there any empty values are there first you have to do the analysis first of all and to big to make your analysis more effective then data visualization is going to help you Got it? Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. But your data visualization is also part of your the data analysis only. But normally, whenever we do analysis normally, that is what we call it as an the data analytics. If we do it visually, we are going to call it as an visual analytics. That's why all these topics we are going to put into a concept called as an EDA. We are going to do it. What we call okay. it as exploratory data analysis right okay fine so okay so that is the uh yes anybody any more questions guys if we have okay so, so uh, mm -hmm. uh, sorry. Yes. 
sorry Bamsi. so i just yeah. wanted to ask like oh. so uh, if uh, if you have a data of around uh, uh, 30000 records mm -hmm. okay and out of which let's say in continuous uh, contiguous locations i mean the placings or sequence you can say mm -hmm. uh, around 1000 uh, data are missing so how you will perform your visualization on that after uh, doing uh, uh, some analysis on that I mean, uh, those data gaps or missing data, how you will identify or what, what kind of visualization or analysis will, will be happening there? No, no. So actually, the first thing is um, you are saying that there is some data was there, but some kind of a data was missing. Let us say that um, some data was missing in the, it depends on that. So every time, generally what we are going to call it as, that means uh, in basically in mathematics or in the statistics, what we'll, what we will say is, the same solution does not work for every kind of a data what we cannot do that. So generally, as generally in what in what extent we are going to do is generally whenever the data was missing, what generally we are going to do is we are going to replace that particular missing value. Generally, that is first what we recommend. Okay, so but, every but, time. But Vamsi, how you will replace that value because yeah, yeah. we may not know what exact value could, yeah, be, yeah, yeah. could it be. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm saying that. Yeah, okay. There are some going to be, there are going to be some kind of an statistical techniques are there, which we are going to perform this replacing of value. Generalized, I'm talking in a generic way. Specifically, it depends. One more thing is it depends on the data what we are using. So in that case, what we are going to do is sometimes, generally what we are going to do is, anyhow, this uh, terminology may be, uh, you may not be uh, aware about that. Generally, when it comes to our data, what we are going to do is there are two types of data will be there. One is a categorical data and the other one is going to be what we call it as continuous data. So what is that later I'll discuss if you have the idea about that well and good. Generally, whenever it is a categorical data was missing, means generally categorical data means distinct values are there, some kind of a group of data is there. Generally, whenever there is a categorical data, generally the replacing of values will be we are going to do with the help of the mode that statistics we have a number called as a mode right the value which is repeatedly which is going to be repeated for more number of times that is what generally we are going to repeat it by uh, we are going to do it with the help of the categorical data that is most frequently what we are going to call it as better to call it as most frequently but whenever it comes to the continuous data generally we are going to replace with mean values and median values we are going to generally we are going to replace the techniques but this is not a thumb rule it depends on the data how we are going to be gets working so sometimes if it is not possible that means you are saying that there are 30000 records are there see there are 30000 records are there in that you are saying that 10000 or 1000 records are going to be having some missing values so in that case i will try to find out is this 1000 records are any important that means if i remove this 1000 records are you losing any information? So if I feel that I'm not losing any information from this thousand records, in that case, I can just delete this particular records which are having thousand records. So that depends on the data and that depends on that particular, whatever the problem statement you are trying to solve it. Right? Yeah, thanks, got it. Okay, fine. Yeah, thanks. So we cannot say that every time I say that I don't say replace, Every time I'm not going to do this. For example, in this case, observe carefully. Let us say that, can you tell me, uh, 2 o'clock is 18, uh, let us say 18 degrees centigrade and 4 o'clock it is going to be 19 degrees centigrade, but 3 o'clock it was missing. Let us say that we call it as NAN. So can you tell me what is the best suitable option to replace this value? Just can you tell me any idea for that? There is a missing at the 3 o'clock. So what shall I do now? I want to replace that. So what do you say that best suitable value? I think uh, it should be any uh, mean uh, mean value you can calculate and put it there. Mean value means on that particular day mean value. Yes, yes. Uh, so let us say that when you replace with the mean value, just an example, what could be the average uh, temperature on a particular day? For example, if you, if you take it about that, how much will be there? Maybe let us say that I'm taking somewhere around 26 degrees 26. is an average. Yes, 26. but if I replace this three o'clock at twenty-six degrees, this is does not looks to be meaningful. Oh, okay, right, got you, got you. Isn't because, it? Yeah, so, it's enough. I mean, the higher temperature you are, it is. It's and suddenly degrees. from two o'clock, I cannot bring the temperature to twenty-six degrees, and suddenly within one hour of time, it cannot come to nineteen. So your graph will going to be something which is going to be looks like this, right? 
suddenly it has been hiked it has been just it has been spiked to 26 degrees and we are going to do that so in that case what is the technique here is either i will replace this three o'clock either with the two o'clock temperature or or either with the four o'clock temperature so maybe that is going to be 18 degrees or 19 degrees i'm going to replace so that is more meaningful right instead of replacing with the mean value Yes, yes, but this seems to be nearing value. I mean, uh, there's the, around obviously, those, uh, yes. the, obviously, see, it cannot go up to 26 degrees or 30 degrees at a time. And again, it cannot come to 90 degrees suddenly within one hour of time, right? So that is the reason generally I'm talking about that. Generally, these techniques are nothing but what we are going to call it as fill down and fill up options, what we are going to do that. So there are some techniques are there where we are going to replace that particular missing values with some appropriate values we are going to do that that is what we are going to do that okay uh, so but, once i was just yes. sorry to interrupt you yeah, 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 sure. so yeah, yeah, here sure. here you are uh, visualizing things manually okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you are observing very uh, closely and clearly like mm -hmm. this is the possibility like yes. it should be put in i mean filling i mean yes. the missing data can be filled in by up or down and nearby 18 and uh, uh, just below 19. Mm. Okay. 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 So manually you are able to do it, but in terms of computers, like if I, I want to implement some logic, something, mm. so how it will, what will be the approach? Like how it will consider 18 or 19 or some other approach, like some algo would be there to replace that value. Yes, absolutely. I mean, technically or um, yeah. I mean the machine part, how machine will do that? That's yeah, the yeah. question. So, so th the thing is, these are going to be done not by the machine. This is going to be done by the user. Manual we have to yeah. do it manually. Yes. Okay. So these are all going to comes into which technique? It is all going to be comes into the concept called as an data cleansing technique, what we are going to call it as. Right? So machines cannot do all this work. So that is the main expertise of the this machine learning expert. If everything is done by the machine, obviously we don't require a machine learning expert at all. So your data analytics, data cleansing, data visualization, everything we have to do by ourselves. Once you feel that the data is okay, the data is going to be uh, effective for the machine to learn, then only we are going to give the data to the machine. So machines not going to do all these application automatically. But there are some automated techniques are there. They are not automated techniques. Simple to say that there are going to be, see, to mainly why we use this. So today I'm going to tell you about those techniques only. So technique is going to be important here. But to implement the technique, we are going to take the help of the Python. I'm going to take it. Why I'm going to take the help of the Python here now? Why? Because is what we are going to do is it is going to be nothing but what simply to say that it is going to be nothing but whenever there are some Python libraries are there. So see, just now I said that I want to replace this value with a previous value or with the next value. How do you do that? For that, you don't write any code or you need to write anything. There is some Python libraries are there, which is going to be takes care about that. So just simply you specify what you want to do. The Python libraries are going to take care about that. Right? Okay, okay, fine. Okay, fine. So today, I think uh, some of the uh, questions, I think you, know, you can understand it for the today's class. So I'll show you some small, small techniques I'll show you and how I'm going to be implementing with the help of the Python so you can understand. So already I explained you. Here, the code is not important. Python does not have any importance. So how to replace? Why should I replace with mean? Why should I replace with median? Which one is appropriate value? So that is the technique which we have to know about that. So, okay, once you know that, once you decided that I want to replace with a mean, how to replace with a, uh, let us say, median, or how to replace with the previous value, or how to replace with the next value. Once you know that for implementation, technically, we are going to take the help of the Python libraries. I'm going to take it. Okay, fine. So, okay, so anyhow, coming to the main, our today's discussion here is, guys, even yesterday also, somebody has raised a question. How much extent the maths is required? That is what uh, most of the people think that. Generally, most of the people think that, um, okay, so maths means, again, you have to learn all the concepts of maths and all these things. As I already yesterday, I explained you some few points. Yes, maths is absolutely required to learn the data science. Why? Because every algorithm which we are going to use in our data science or in machine learning is containing some kind of a mathematical concept. But observe carefully. So though it is depending on the mathematical concept, 
it is internally utilizes the concept but you need not to write a single line of code we need not to write any functional code or we need not to write any any kind of a calculations so the algorithms is going to capable to implement the algorithms are completely based on that particular whatever that particular data it is going to be gets working on that based on the logic behind that so just an example guys don't worry just it's a very uh, it's very small technique i'm going to tell you have a look into that for example let us say that uh, i'm going to take the marks of the students just an example guys just an examples of marks of a students students has got a marks of 40 marks 56 marks 80 marks okay 86 89 something let us say 90 marks we have been taken don't worry uh, because you cannot understand this particular technique so 40 50 60 86 89 90 is the marks what we have got now what is our requirement here is i want to do some scaling to this data scaling means nothing but i want to bring because what will happen here is for example take let us say that these are going to be marks of maths let us say that if you see the physics marks for example maybe let us say that it started with 25 25 28 40 let us say 42 let us say 64 68 and the maximum marks they have got only up to 90 only but if you observe carefully the mass marks and physics marks both are of a different scale so one value is from 40 to 90 one value is from 25 to 80 so why should i scale the data later i'll tell you but i'm just telling about why should i what is concept of scaling so it's a it's a mathematical concept guys so we have to scale the data scaling is nothing but what we are going to do is we are going to bring any range of data between 0 to 1 we are going to do it different type of scaling techniques are there this technique is nothing but what we call it as min max scaling so what is this min max scaling will do is guys whatever the range of data was there it is going to bring that particular data in between 0 to 1 minimum value will come to 0 maximum value comes to 1 so if we apply the scaling on this marks both maths and physics will comes between 0 to 1 only. So in maths, 40 will become 0 and in physics, 25 will become 0. So don't think that we are changing the values. We are changing. We are not changing any importance of the data. We are not changing that particular whatever the priority of that particular values. Only the scale is going to be changes. How do you do this scaling? Simple. It is min max scaling is formula is nothing but from every element, you subtract the minimum value and that should be divided by the maximum minus minimum if you want we can verify in online so this is what we call it as an min max scaling technique what we are going to call it as so what is the formula for that x minus minimum divided by maximum minus minimum so as a data science expert why you are doing this min max scaling only you have to understand it guys why you are doing this what is the purpose of the scaling technique if I don't do the scaling, what will happen? Just understand only the importance of that. Implementation is very easy, guys. Multiple ways we can implement it. So just I'll show you the example how Python will help you to do that. So don't worry. I'm going to just use some uh, some kind of an IDE. I'm going to use it here now. I'm going to use something called as Jupyter Notebook. Later, I'll tell you how to install the Jupyter Notebook and all these things. I'll tell you in the later classes, guys. Don't worry. We don't start initially with the Jupyter Notebook. In the later couple of classes, after maybe one week, I'll explain you how to install this Jupyter Notebook. So don't worry. Just don't worry. I'll explain the concept. So even, see, even you are not aware about Python also, learning Python is a very, very easy technique, guys. So learning, it's not like the other programming languages. Learning Python is very, very easy. So at any stage, you can learn the Python. So it's not that you have to start only with the basics of Python. Don't worry, just have a look into that. The same example, I want to do that. So how do you do the min max scaling here now? For example, if I take this one, in the mass marks, 40 is minimum, 90 is maximum. So it is going to be 40 minus 40 divided by, it is 90 minus 40, which will be zero here. This will be 90 minus 40 divided by 90 minus 40. For example, take 80. It is 80 minus 40 divided by 90 minus 40. So it is going to be 40 by 50, guys. It is going to be. So 4 by 5, it is going to be nothing but it will comes to 0 0.8. It will become guys. Here, whenever it comes to physics marks, how do you scale the data? It is 25 minus 25 divided by 80 minus 25. 
it is again here it is 80 minus 25 divided by 80 minus 25 what about the 40 here now it is 40 minus 25 divided by it is 80 minus 25 is the value what we can see so only thing is why should i even if you don't know the formula also does not matter if you should know what is min max scaling so just make, make you understand how much extent the maths is required so see it is not a complex it's not a, going to be a complex formula only thing you have to know is why should you why should i go for which is going to be nothing but why should i go for a min max scaling or first of all why should i go for a scaling what is the necessity for the scaling right now you can't understand it but later we can understand the concepts but see how i'm going to implement the same techniques by using the python application i'm going to use it python is a very simple language guys so there is a lot of libraries are there see uh, don't worry just i'm writing some syntaxes don't worry about that let us say that same maths marks i'm going to take it maths is equal to don't worry about that what is the code i'm writing and all these things very easy to understand it guys 40 56 it is same numbers i'm taking guys 80 86 it is going to be 80 and which is going to be 86 and which is going to be nothing but 89 and 90 i have taken here now so now i want to scale this data so how to scale the data i know the formula i know how to how to take the formula it is minimum min so every value minus the minimum value divided by maximum minus minimum i know the formula so how to do that formula observe carefully maths minus np dot minimum of maths calculate value divided by it is going to be np dot maths what is that np np is nothing but some library name guys max minus np dot which is going to be nothing but the minimum of maths so see there i know the formula so i implemented it see the formula 40 has came to zero 90 has came to 1 and just now I calculated for 80. It is 80 minus 40, which is going to be nothing but 40 divided by 90 minus 40, which is nothing but 40 by 50, which is going to be 0 0.8. For 56, it makes 0 0.32. For 86, it made 0 0.92. 89, it made it as 0 0.89. For 90, it is a 1. So somebody says that, okay, I understood your problem statement. Okay, fine. but the problem here is I don't know the formula for min max scaling. I know that min max scaling is required. It will come between 0 to 1. But I don't know how to implement this with the help of a Python. That also no need to worry about. Lot of Python libraries will be there, guys. See, guys, don't worry. What I'm doing this, don't worry about that. I told you now, guys, there are going to be some kind of an, a pre-processing techniques we are going to implement it. See there, it's a pre it is a predefined libraries are there. Import, I can say the function called as, the name of the function is going to be nothing but min max scaling. So you don't write the formula. Simple, there is already, there is a function called as an min max scale. See, I'm not writing any formula. I imported that function, min max scale of maths over. No need to write any code from your side. Same result, same output as it is. So it is not to show you the Python code here or it is not going to explain it the mathematical concept. So what is my main discussion here is, yes, in, in machine learning or in the data science, main important is going to be math. It's a mathematical concept, guys. It is not a Python concept. So min-max scaling is a mathematical concept which will bring any range of data between 0 to 1. So, so once... You so once see here you are passing an array of maths maths is a maths is a variable where it's, you are storing an array of numbers yes, mass absolutely and you are just passing that variable into the ma min max, min max scale. underscore scale and uh, that's uh, function which that's is right. coming from that particular library library that's okay it. and that's it this is all this is doing the same thing exactly same thing which you are doing through the math formula Ma maths minus np yes. np dot min and max yes. so this is very i mean it looks very very easy things like only you need to import the library and use the method and just pass the array or whatever the kind of data you are, yes. you are supposed to pass in. Yes, but the main important is you have to understand why do you require the min max scaling. Yes, yes. That correct. is the first thing you have to understand. That's the point. Of, what is my point of discussion is you have to understand the concept of maths. You need not to learn the implementation of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Correct. So why you are doing a min max scaling? That is what I'm saying that right now. See. 
you don't know what is you understood the formula you it is very easy but why should i do the min max scaling you don't know that right so that that concepts we'll discuss it later whenever we go for the actual classes so what i'm saying here is we should know the concept behind this particular what is the mass behind the implementation if you just understand why you are doing that that is sufficient how to do that if i know the formula i can write the formula by myself mm -hmm. even if a person does not knows what is min max scaling also he knows only one thing any data will come to he knows why should i do the min max scaling the data will come between 0 to 1 how it comes he does not knows about that so what is a direct method there is a direct function called as a min max scaling in python and then it is going to be so why do you prefer the python for machine learning means most of the utilities and functionalities that are required in machine learning and data science can be implemented efficiently with the help of the python libraries okay so the name of the library here is scikit-learn what is that sklearn what we are going to call it as so if you see the scikit-learn library this is what we call it as scikit-learn scientific kit for machine learning so scikit-learn is a free and open source machine learning machine learning library for the which is going to be for the python so that is what it is going to be for the python programming language even if you open this also it says the same thing this is the official website which is going to be belongs to scikit-learn it is nothing but machine learning which is going to be in python so simple and efficient tools for predictive data analytics. So as I said that it is for basically for predictive data analysis. Analyze the data, mainly use it for prediction purpose. So it is going to be, this, this is a, one of the efficient, one of the very popular library which we are going to be using in Python for machine learning concept. So the idea here is understand the mathematical concept behind that. Why? What are the techniques are there? But implementation wise, we are taking the help of the Python to implement it. So that's the reason these most of the mathematicians and statisticians, they know the formula. They know why should I implement this, but how to implement in this particular programming language. They We cannot go for Java or something like C, C++, where we have to write a lengthy code. But see the same technique, how I implemented this in a very and simplest way. I have done this. So for every implementation, there is a Python library will be there just this is a working so i have to split the data into training and testing you should know why should i go for training why should i go for a testing once if you know that implementing the training and testing is going to be very easy with the help of the python libraries okay so absolutely there is some maths is required guys but it does not mean to say that you should be an expertise in the maths you should remember the formulas or we have to buy hard the formulas or you have to derive the formulas or you have to write the code for that, not required, guys. It's very simple. You have to understand only the math behind that. Implementation will be mostly taken care by the your algorithms. Sometimes here and there, a small, small mathematical formulas. If you want, you can go and check it out, guys. Maximum in any machine learning, whatever the code we are implementing, we are going to use the math behind them, but we are not going to write any code or functionality for that. So up to some extent only, we are going to utilize them, but remaining will be taken care by the, our machine learning algorithms will take care about that. So understanding the maths is required, but you need not to be in highly expertise in that. So some basic maths, so simple linear algebra concepts you require, uh, some kind of an, uh, as I said that, right, min max scale, having a different type of scaling techniques are there. We have a different type of scaling techniques are there. So if you know the techniques, it is going to be just a, it's going to be a little bit good to understand those particular concepts. So that's it. That is going to be one of the, the mainly the mathematics behind them, which we have to understand the concept. So all about the maths only, just numbers. Mostly we are going to work with the numbers. Maximum we'll work with the numbers only. Even if there is any textual data is there also, we'll completely convert all that particular textual data into, which is going to be a numerical format only we have to convert. Why? Because most of these machine learning libraries and machine learning algorithms, mostly there are going to works only with the numerical values rather than working with the string values. Okay. So that is the one which uh, we can see the way which we are going to be understanding about this particular concepts here. Right. Okay. So that's it, guys. That is going to be just to make you understand the what is the mass behind them and a lot of importance of visualization also. So visualization is also very important. 
so visualization means don't think that uh, we have to work with uh, something like uh, we have to work with a large um, some kind of an uh, dashboard reporting all these are not required because we are going to create the visuals only just to understand our data guys so our machine learning algorithms behavior how the performance is there uh, how the accuracies are there so all these things we are going to just implement in and just to understand them in a visual format, we have to require some kind of a visualization. So visualization is also done in a very easy way in Python, guys. So so many people think that, so, uh, so sir, shall I go for Power BI? Shall I go for Tableau? That, that much is not required, guys. So visualization also can be done in a very easy way. For, the, for every implementation, there is a libraries will be there, guys. See there, I'm importing a small another library is there. So just I want to make you understand what is the importance of Python here. So importance of Python is nothing is there, guys. So why should I use a scatter plot? You have to know. When should I use a scatter plot? We have to know that. But how to create a scatter plot does not have any importance here now. So just an example I'm showing you, just a small example to make you understand that. So x is equal to np dot. I'll do one thing. It is going to be a range of, just don't worry. It is going to be somewhere around uh, 1440 I'm going to take it just an example guys just to make you can understand the concept it is going to be np dot I'm going to convert this into some kind of a radiance I'm going to convert it y is equal to np dot sine of x see guys how simple I'm going to plot a small visualization I'm going to plot it plt dot which is going to be plot it is going to be x comma y plt dot show so if you can see this, you know that what type of visualization it is. So I think all of you have an, you can understand this guys. It is nothing but a sine wave I have been plotted here now. See simple, just only just one or two lines of code. I generated the data, a sequence of numbers guys, a range of numbers from one to 1400, 1440 I have taken. And after that I converted into radians and based on that I applied the sine value and I just plotted the data. If you want, I can also plot y, which is going to be y1 equal to, I said np dot, which is going to be cos of x. So I'm going to be applying some kind of n cosine, which is going to be plt dot plot. It is going to be x comma y1 here now. So I didn't write, I didn't, I'm not writing any complex code here now. So all these are going to be done in a very easy way with the help of the Python. So like this only guys in every, as I told you know, so in the classroom also guys, every code I'm going to write it from the scratch. So I'm not going to directly open some existing code. I'm not going to do that. So every day there will be some kind of an, it is going to be, see there. So today's class, if you take about that 23rd, right? So it is going to be 23rd. So the sessions will be like this guys. 23, 8, 2024, 6, 6 PM, 23, 0, 8, 7 AM class. So 23, these are going to be previous month classes. So like this, you can see 23rd, lot of, which is going to be almost all from January to this month, we have it. 22nd, each and every example, what we can see. 22nd of August, which is going to be 22nd of August, 6 p.m., what we can see the class. Like that, everywhere, it is going to be some other class, which is going to be data visualization. I'll just show you some few examples I'm going to show you guys, so that you can just get to know about how simple this particular coding part is going to be there. So these are going to be some, as I said that night, some kind of an basic statistical analysis. Some basic statistical analysis, we are going to use it with the help of both data visualization and with the help of some kind of an mathematical concepts also, I'm going to do that. So for that, I'm not writing any complex code, guys. A simple, a few lines of code only, I'm going to write it. I'm not writing any a complex code and complex applications. I'm not going to write it here. Simple, just one or two lines of code only, we are going to write it. See how simple the visualizations has been done. We don't require any, some Power BI or Tableau to perform all this data visualization. With the basic skill of data visualization in Python, that is going to be sufficient with that. Okay. So that's it, guys. So just, I want to make you understand that. So concepts understanding is important, guys. Programmatically, there is no importance at all because Programmatically, we can implement any kind of a things very easily. So even mathematics people and statistics people, now they are able to use Python very easily. They're able to work on it. Why? Because they know the theory, they know the concept, but for implementation, what we have to do that. I'll see, we'll see guys, lot of mathematical techniques. 
how to find the distance between two data points you know the concept guys x1 minus x2 square plus y1 minus y2 square so instead of you calculating the distance direct formula was there you can do the formula or else if you know the formula we can write the code for that so multiple ways guys but maximum we'll try to utilize we don't write the code at all we directly try to find out the calculations with the help of some kind of a predefined functions okay so that's it guys that is going to be uh, i just want to discuss in the today's class so maximum i think hope all of you got some idea guys how you are learning um, will be there so mostly we'll concentrate on the conceptual learning but not on the um, programmatical part we'll do the programmatical part also but programmatically we don't have any importance so that is going to be very easy but we have to first understand why you are doing this why not in this particular way so for understanding the concept we have to implement with the help of the python but here python does not have an importance at all so mostly the conceptual only so what are the different techniques we have to implement all these things we'll discuss in our the main course curriculum but we have to learn we have to implement with the help of a programming language so what shall i do guys first we'll start with some basics of python we'll start it in the next session guys okay so your next session will be on monday because uh, tomorrow we are not going to have a class as i said that no guys one or two weeks i'll give a holiday one week i will put the class because that we are in the demo session right so i'm not taking any class for tomorrow your next class will be on the monday's class guys where i'll start with a small introduction regarding the python introduction i'll start it on the monday's class guys okay and if anyone has missed the previous classes guys uh, previous classes if we have been missed don't worry my back end team is going to send you one follow up link like a follow up mail like this guys so the demo link will be there demo videos will be there the last two classes that are uploaded to the the uploaded to the youtube so if you want you can just i'm sharing the link for that you will also get the uh, you will also get the follow up mail to your mails also but apart from that if you have missed it guys so this is going to be the last two classes sessions guys so you can see there the same demo 1 and demo 2 so we can see the demos guys okay so this is the one which uh, i can just explain that i shared the uh, links guys so you can just click on the link or just save the link and you can you can just watch the two videos guys these are the last class and that before class these are the two sessions guys right so that's it guys uh, that's it for the today's class uh, anyone guys any questions from your side so if you have any questions please you can clarify the questions and then we can just end up the session for today guys no questions okay shall we end up the session for today guys no questions anyone okay then so just for today i'll stop it here guys so we'll continue uh, the session we'll start with some basics of python on the monday's class guys so if you have any queries if you have any doubts uh, i can just take up the questions before the session and then i'll start with the introduction to python i'll start it on the monday's class guys right so thanks for today guys just for today we'll end up the session and uh, we'll continue on the monday's class guys right all of you guys